Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. Hang out this nerd, Ted, and join us as we as we begin to hunt trolls. Hey guys, jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter. It's a great way to get gaming tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Troll Hunters is a series that I uh, found a little while ago on Netflix, and apparently Ted did as well. Indeed. And my. Uh, yeah, my, my son, I don't know if my son pointed it out to me or I asked him about it and he had already watched it. It was really good. So there's like 26 episodes that's and they're they're only like 22... 22 to 24 minutes apiece. But I mean, that's a good solid six plus hours of yes. animated goodness. So it is a kid's show. I'll, I'll have to admit that, but I enjoyed it all the same. Truth, truth be told, I think it came out in December near, near, uh, near Christmas time. And... I'm I'm sitting there at work and I, I'm like, all right, I need a break. Go to, by work, Ted means right over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I work from home, and I needed needed a break. And I'm like, all right, let me pop over to Net Netflix, and it's like, hey, here's this show, Troll Hunters. Watch trailer, and I click the button, and I'm like, oh, this looks really good. I want to watch this, and it's like, it's not coming out for a few more days. I'm like, crash your Netflix. Yeah, well, I've recently, I found it a couple months ago and watched it. Now, the thing that really sold me on it and uh, intrigued me is when I saw, you know, when I saw who the director was. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, not only, not only directed, but based off of the material by Guillermo del Toro. Toro. Yeah, so I was like, all right, well, I, I enjoyed Pacific Rim. He, you know, I've enjoyed other stuff that he's done. So I think I'm going to like this. I know some people trash Pacific Rim, but, you know, giant monsters and robots, I'm in. Yeah, can't, can't go wrong with that. So the concept of... Uh, troll hunters. Now we're gonna talk spoilers, so if you're not in the spoilers, go watch the show first, and then come back and watch our video. In the in the world that we live in, trolls exist. They live underground, and just like the legends in Lord of the Rings, trolls turn to stone in sunlight. So therefore, you, that's why you never see them because they're I don't always know hide. if it's uh, underground so much as in another uh, dimension or something, because they always go through a portal to get there well they, they go through a, a kind of portal to get there but they absolutely live underground well and sure the, the, it is underground but i'm all i'm saying is i'm not so sure that it's our underground it, it is because um uh, droll actually tunnels through uh jim's house to get to the sewers to then be able to get to troll market uh, I'm not sure about that one, but okay. Uh, I know he well. does do the tunneling under the house to move around because they're trolls because trolls can't go into sunlight because right. they're kind of like Tolkien trolls where if the sunlight hits them, they turn to stone. Yep. So there is a, the protector of the, the, the good trolls is called the troll hunter because there are bad trolls and they're referred to as gum gums. In the very first episode, you you find out that a human winds up getting selected to be a troll hunter and that's where all of the insanity ensues because trolls have never interacted with humans before and there's never been a, a human troll hunter yeah there's there's actually like a magical amulet that the troll hunter carries and it basically equips them with their weapon and their armor and it's where their power comes from essentially and the human finds it and is able to activate it and you know one of the big things is supposedly this this mystical object calls to the person that's supposed to be the next troll hunter correct now now whether it was because you know the main character jim was just happened to be close by and the thing was desperate not to get picked up by the bad trolls or what they never go into that but no matter what it ends up he becomes the new troll hunter correct now as Dave pointed out, this is designed as a kid show, and you get that whole element because while you have Jim doing all the troll hunter stuff, he still has to go through I'm a teenager, so he's got to navigate the the trials and tribulations of fighting trolls and being in high school and being in you know liking a girl and all of that general unpopularity stuff that typically happens to these strange kids yeah there's a pretty pretty large supporting cast that goes along with jim and his troll hunting activities <laughs> so you've got toby who is his friend and once once all of the troll hunting stuff goes on he adopts the 
the code name Warhammer, which winds up getting extra hilarity later on in the episode. You've got the love interest Claire, who uh, ha has a you know back and forth relationship for a while with him, and also she gets more involved as well and becomes more of her own character. Yes, um, and you know so what what ends up happening too is like traditionally the troll hunter is this uh, solo figure that just goes out and he does his thing and does it alone. He cuts ties from everybody that means anything to him. While Jim is taking on this this other methodology of basically creating the troll hunter team. Right. So he, he refers to them all as we're the troll hunters. And that's why the show is called Troll Hunters, not Troll Hunter. Uh, so you've got Arg, who is kind of the, the silent brute. He doesn't say very much. And the further that the show goes on, the more you learn about him in his past, which I thought was kind of awesome. And also, he's, he's a pacifist. When you meet him, he's a pacifist. Yes. In there. And, but he's like the most one of the most opposing trolls that they, <laughs> they introduced into this series. So then you've got Blinky, who's kind of his trainer slash guide into becoming a troll hunter. And I also believe uh, he's kind of like a he's kind of like a screw up too, as far as the trainers go, and and that seems to be like something he's trying to get over. Not only that, like his character, his personality is he is basically the conspiracy theorist of the trolls. Absolutely, hundred percent. So that you know that creates some friction between him and the uh, troll market leadership. So speaking of which, <laughs> who was the, the there's the shaman that kind of leads uh, that's the troll market. That's Vendel. Yes. And like I like the look of the trolls and typically they don't look anything like your typical D and D trolls. They they have a wide variety. Uh Arg is a massive and immense and you no, know, he's got he's got a you know big patch of fur on his chest and shoulders, whereas Blinky's got six eyes and four arms, is you know kind of short and scrawny. Vendel is tall and not as wide as Arg, but still pretty massive. He's got that and, very triangular build to yeah. him. And he's he's got these weird horns that spiral out to the side. Well, actually, he's got some kind of runes on them, but they they all look very different from the trolls as we you know would know from D and D. They're they're more Nordic. I, that's what okay. I would, I, I would go to. with that. Uh, but Vendel, he's he's the one who actually has and uses magic, and I kind of see him as the leader of the troll village, the troll market, if you call it. Uh, I saw it the same way. And also, he's very ag ag -tag uh, ag antagonistic. That's the word. With, you know, with the you know, protagonist in the in the series throughout. There's a pivot point, but it doesn't happen for mu until much later. Yeah, he, he doesn't like the idea of a human troll hunter, and he makes his opinions known. Very much of the, you know... These are the old ways. This is how it's done. And he doesn't like the shakeup of change. So in the very first episode, you meet Kanjagal, who is the current troll hunter. And as you kind of guess, he doesn't last very long. And his son, Droll, is the one who expects, okay, well, my dad was a troll hunter. I was groomed to be his replacement. Why am I not the troll hunter? So he begins to butt heads with Jim. And again, that's a relationship dynamic that changes throughout the the, the show. And I that, like it. That's one of the things I will say about this show. Even though it's a kid's show, like all the characters change and grow and in and, and unexpected in different ways. I mean, maybe not. Maybe they might be a little bit predictable, but at the same time, each character has its own arc and they, there's growth there and changes and things that they have to come to grips with. So I found that part really interesting. The Blinky character, they do some really fun things with, with that character uh, that that were completely unexpected. So so there's definitely a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of different like magical mayhem that happens throughout the series. You see them interact with troll, troll societies uh, of different places. Yes. And... So only the gum gums are really evil, mm -hmm. but the other ones aren't necessarily nice either. Correct. Um, but you know they're they're not evil. I would say the you know, they're more like xenophobic, isolationist, ice, and you know they do whatever they can to you know keep outsiders out. So the other thing that they have in this world is changelings, and this is a, a big spoiler that you find out. You know, not not supremely quickly, but in the first first uh you know the first half you learn that learn that mr stickler one of the teachers that actually likes the main character jim 
he's a changeling. Now, the way changelings work is typically from the time that they're an infant, their their human self is replaced with a changeling. That's essentially a half troll, half human. Is that is that the way you you get yeah, it? Yeah, that's what it kind of seemed like. Uh, and uh, yeah, because they kept referring to them as lessers and half breeds right. and stuff like that. Impure, impure. Yeah. You so know. the the changelings have the ability to look and act as a human. They have the ability to go out in sunlight. They're not affected by the sun the way trolls would, and they can work and move in human society, and without the humans actually knowing. But when they need to, they can shift and look like a troll. And, and as Ted said, um, you know, they're bonded at infants, so the, what the happens is the, the trolls or the changelings, they kidnap infants, they replace them with a changeling, and they keep those humans safe because uh, I believe they're connected. And in order for them to continue be, you know, their life as a human, they need, to, they need the, the real ones that they replace to be alive and well. So, so once they get kidnapped, you know, they're pretty much safe, but they're kind of like out of the picture. Right. And you know more more develops with that particular plot thread late in the late in the in the show or halfway through the show somewhere in there, uh, and it's it's kind of something I I saw coming. It's not like oh my god, like, yeah. they they talked about where changelings come from, and I'm like all right, well this is clearly the next thing that's going to happen. It didn't it didn't detract from the the show for me. It, it was just, just predictable. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're also an adult watching a child show too, Ted. By the way, <laughs> so. So you 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 meet again right in the first first part of the the show, uh, Bular, who's the first bad guy, and you know, he he kind of is utterly imposing. He he kills Conjugar, big shocker, and he, he's a a real badass for for the first uh, you know thirteen episodes, and he kind of gets replaced by a how would how would you re refer to Angarot? Uh, more badass. <laughs> more badass. He actually, uh, Bular is far more physical, whereas Angorot is more magical. Yeah, well, they kind of describe him as like a hunter assassin type, and he's not, I don't know that he's really a troll either. Uh, he, I, I don't even know what he is, because to me, he looks he looks undead. Yes, he looks like some kind of money, mummy. They talk about like a warlock pact, almost, if you're talking D&D &D terms. <laughs> so there's definitely some different things going on there, and they've introduced different things throughout throughout the series. It's really good overall. I enjoyed it. You know, if, you're, you, know, if you want something that's not like real heady, and you can just watch it, and it's fun, th this is a good show to watch. It, it's, it's comical. It's got a lot of things that I would love to just be like, all right, how can I steal this and put it into into D and D? It's got great NPCs. It's got great magic items. It's it's got great plot threads that you could wind up work working out. There's there's so much that could literally be just stripped right out of that right out of here and ported right into D and D. Yeah, yeah. It basically reads like a D and D quest for part of it. Like one of the things that they need in order to you know actually inv invade the gum gum realm to accomplish their goals is these three magic gemstones to put into his amulet. Mm -hmm. And then like and then the cool thing is like the cool surprise is every time he puts a new one in his amulet, he gets new abilities. He gets new powers, which, you know, kind of goes with that whole scaling leveling up. And in fact, Toby at one point sounds like, "Oh, you leveled up." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was it totally speaks to the D&D &D player. Well, or or just the gamer. The gamer yeah, yeah the gamer in general. So, all in all, it's a good series. It's fun. If you have children, watch it with them. Uh, and then you have a good excuse. If not, you know, just watch it and don't tell anybody. <laughs> no, it's it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Guys, tell us what you think in the comments below while you're at it. Like, share, and subscribe. And check out all the awesome stuff over on nerdarchy.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.